how I cut tenons on a large, heavy, cumbersome workpiece. Hola, woodworkers. Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. I've got a bench top in progress for my samurai carpenter workbench. So here's like a half of the bench top, and then this is going to be an apron for that bench top. Uh, this is upside down. I'm going to uh, use my router to cut a tenon on the inside edge of this board, and so it's going to be one and a quarter inch tenon first all the way through, and then I'm going to cut fingers out of it to fit through these uh, separate mortises. And then those are going to be uh, split with wedges and uh, anchored in there and then shaved off. So that's my project here, this big heavy workpiece. Normally my preference when doing tenons is to use my dado stack on my table saw. Uh, but when I've got something this long and this heavy, it extends beyond my table saw and even with my large crosscut sled, I have trouble supporting it. So doing it on my table saw, my preferred method, uh, went out the window. And so I go to my equally preferred method, which is using my large uh, Boss router. This is model uh, MR23. EVS uh, with a half inch collet so I can fit in very large router bits. I have mounted on here what's called the Samurai Carpenter router jig, which is this plastic base. And what that does is gives me a lot of stability around my cut. Whereas if I just use the regular base, I would end up tipping off of my cut and this provides extra stability. Got a one inch router bit with a half inch collet and a powerful enough router to handle that. Normally when you're gonna do a large workpiece like this, you're not just working on one, you usually have another one that's exactly the same width. That is very useful as a brace for your router base. Without that, I might come out over the end here and then tip down and cause a problem. I like to keep this router level, so I like to have a second workpiece uh, to secure it with on the outside. I want to have a limit on how far my router goes here to the right into the workpiece uh, because I only want the router to come up to this line. <clears throat> now I want the distance between this line and a line at the other end to be very precise so uh, I don't like to go over it obviously that would be a little hard to put the wood back but also if you leave it uh, too short then you get involved with a lot of chiseling. So I like to go ahead and try to creep up to that line with all of my setup uh, so that I can use the router to cut it precisely because I find it cuts much nicer than my uh, hand chiseling. Now, make sure you're unplugged. Last thing you want to be doing is grabbing hold of this router bit while you accidentally press an on button or something. So I'm going to get that over uh, where my line is. I've got my good prescription glasses on. I rotate that bit so that I can see at the outside of its cycle that it's not going to go over the line. Sometimes you go to line it up and you don't have the outer edge of the bit uh, down there. I even have a little bit of trouble with my eyesight so I keep a nice handy flashlight always available right on my tool wall check to see that this is square across here. Uh, it is worth the extra minute or whatever it takes to make sure you're getting this right because uh, if you don't and you don't have any other adjustment abilities then it can be problematic. So my one last thing I'm all supported. I've got the stop block. I'm ready to go. I just need to set my uh, or my stop bar so that I don't go beyond this line. So I'm going to take my uh, plunge router, uh, release this stop thing, plunge it all the way down, get uh, a really good look at my depth. I've got the dust collection uh, accessory 
on my uh, router and so I can get that shop back on there. I want to get it so it doesn't restrict my movement. So nice and loose. The thing I like about this router is there is no on off switch. There's only a pressure switch so I can't accidentally have it on and engaged when I plug it in. So I like that. You're always going to be concerned when you're coming across here and you reach the edge of getting some blowout. To protect against that, what you want to do is break the fibers along the edge. And so what I need to do here is get a nice straight cut. I remember I want to be a little bit inside of that line, so I'm setting up inside of that line. A little light pole to get it started. Check to see I'm inside of my line. That whole exercise there was to avoid uh, tear out. You need to do something to deal with tear out. Although with maple, it certainly doesn't seem to be as much of a problem as when you're using uh, like red oak. Uh, but maples, I love working with maple for that purpose. All right, so I got that taken care of. I got my line set, I got my stop block. I got um, all this stuff. Let's get my safety gear on. When we're all done, here's what we have ended up with. We've cut away using the with large router bit. Uh, I'm not a fan of using the little uh, half inch router bits and working over and over and over again. Um, I, I like the big uh, one inch and that works much faster and seems to have more control. So I got a nice square edge. I left my one and a quarter inch uh, tenon here. In this particular case, I've drilled using my benchtop mortiser uh, two relief holes so that I can now work on cutting out the fingers. I could have done this in other ways. There's always multiple ways to skin the cat. If you have a large resaw blade on your bandsaw, there's nothing that would keep you from pushing this across the blade on the bandsaw and cutting this uh, nice straight line as long as your blade's not traveling and then also you could go with the bandsaw this way and if all you have is a, a saw, hand saw, there's nothing that says with enough uh, time and effort that you couldn't just cut a nice straight line across you know for the depth that you need on the cheek and then turn that but uh, and then I can with enough time and effort I can cut this and cut out this uh, waste area just with a handsaw so there are other ways to do it I'm working on another video for tricks tips and techniques of getting these triple split tenons or wedge tenons to fit very, very tightly in my uh, mortises. And so uh, look for that. So the bottom line here is that one of my preferred methods of cutting a large tenon in a heavy cumbersome workpiece is to use my plunge router uh, with all of the stabilization and all of the uh, stop blocks as demonstrated. I hope you find that helpful. I would appreciate it if you could give me a uh, like, maybe even a comment, and uh, a share. That would be very much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, be sure you do that as well. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.